So this is section 6.1, properties of exponents. And starting up at the top, there's just a few words that we want to get comfortable with using. So where it says, note the expression x cubed is called a power. The base x is used as a factor three times because of the exponent three. So take a second, you can pause the video here and write this down. But we want to get comfortable with the difference between the words like power, base, and exponent. So if we use this x cubed as an example, or x to the third power as an example, the x is the base, the 3 is the exponent, And the whole thing, the x cubed, or the x to the third power, the whole piece is the power. So just the x is the base, just the three, or the exponent, or yeah, the third power is the exponent. And then the whole thing, the x to the third power, is what we call the power. And then the next thing to copy down are these three properties. So product of powers property, quotient of powers property, and power of a power property. So you can pause the video here, make sure that you get everything so far copied down in your notes, and then we'll go through some examples of each of these properties. So for the first one, product of powers property, it says to multiply powers with the same base, add their exponents. So it's really important that the base is the same, but if they are the same and we're multiplying, then we'll add the exponents to simplify. So say I have x squared times x to the third power. So if I have x squared times x to the third power, they have the same base. They're both x's. We are multiplying them. So we need to add their exponents. So I'm going to add the 2 and the 3 and combine them all into that one base. So this becomes x raised to the 2 plus 3, or altogether x to the 5th power. And then sometimes it's helpful to see these expanded to really make sense of the properties. So what I mean by that is x squared is x times x, and then x cubed is three x's being multiplied together, so x times x times x. And then if we count them all together, we have one, two, three, four, five x's being multiplied, and that's where the x to the fifth comes from. And then for the next property, the quotient of powers property, it's similar to the last one. It's just now we have a quotient instead of a product, so we're dividing instead of multiplying. So to divide powers with the same base, we need to subtract their exponents. So if I have x to the fifth power over x squared, I have the same base, they're both x's, and I'm dividing them, so I'm going to subtract their exponents. I have to subtract 5 minus 2, so the exponent in the numerator minus the exponent in the denominator. So this becomes x raised to the 5 minus 2, or altogether x to the third power. And then this one we can see by expanding as well. So the x to the fifth, that's five x's being multiplied together. And then over x squared, that's two x's being multiplied together. So we know that every time we divide a number by itself, it's one. Same thing with variables. If I divide a variable by itself, it's one, or it essentially cancels out. So each x in the numerator cancels out an x in the denominator and vice versa. So those two cancel out, and now we're left with 1, 2, 3 x's 
or our x to the third power that we got over here. And then for the last of these three properties, it's the power of a power property. So it says to find a power of a power, you multiply those exponents. So in this case, say I have x squared raised to the fourth power. So I have a power, the x squared, raised to another power, the fourth power. So I have to take those two exponents and multiply them, so 2 times 4. So altogether, this will be x squared raised, or sorry, x raised to the 2 times 4 power, and then 2 times 4 is 8, so altogether, x to the 8th power. And then this one you can see it by expanding as well. So just the x squared part, that's x times x. But I actually have four of those because x squared is being raised to the fourth power. So I'm going to write out four of these x times x's. So I have 1x squared, 2x squared, 3x squared, 4x squared. But now I can also just count my total x's to see what my final exponent should be. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x's being multiplied together, or x to the 8th power. So these next three examples are all related to these properties. So it says example three, that's because it applies to example three in your textbook, or it relates to example three in your textbook, so just keep that in mind. So for A, we have three squared times three to the sixth power. So we have these matching bases, they're both threes, and they're being multiplied. So we want to use the product of powers property here. So that one says that to multiply powers of the same base, we have to add their exponents. So we'll add two plus six to get our final exponent. So altogether it'll be three raised to the two plus six, and then two plus six leaves us with eight. So altogether three to the eighth power. And then for the next example, we have more matching bases. They're both negative four but this time we're dividing, so we have to use the quotient of powers property that says to divide powers at the same base, we have to subtract their exponents. So altogether this would be negative four, and then raised to the eight minus two, because we have to subtract the numerator, or the exponent from the numerator, minus the exponent from the denominator. So negative four raised to eight minus two, and then lastly we can just subtract eight minus two to leave us with negative four to the sixth power. And it is really important that the negative four stays in parentheses so that the negative is included with the four. And then for the next example, uh, z raised to the fourth power raised to the third power, so now we have a power raised to another power, so we have to multiply those exponents. We'll multiply the four times three to get our final exponent. So z raised to the four times three, and then four times three is 12, so altogether we have z to the 12th power. And then the next three examples connect with the ones above them. So A goes with A, B goes with B, C goes with C. These would be good ones to like pause the video and practice on your own. So whenever you're ready, you can unpause. 
So for the first one for A, we have 10 to the fourth times 10 to the sixth. So we have the same base, both 10. We're multiplying them, so we'll add those exponents. So all together it'd be 10 to the four plus six, and then four plus six is 10. So our final answer is 10 to the 10th power. And for the next one, we have five to the eighth power over five to the fourth power. So we have the same base five, and this time we're dividing. So we'll subtract our exponents. We'll do eight minus four. So five raised to the eight minus four. Remember that it has to be the exponent from the numerator or the top minus the exponent from the denominator or the bottom. So altogether, five raised to the eight minus four. So five to the fourth power. And then for the next one, w to the 12th raised to the fifth. So we have a power raised to a power. So we're going to have to multiply those exponents. So w raised to the 12 times 5. And then 12 times 5 is 60. So altogether, w to the 60th. And then these are the last two properties for these notes. So just take a second and copy them down. If you need to pause the video, that's fine. So the property on the left says it's the power of a product property. And it says to find a power of a product, find the power of each factor and multiply. So let's say I have 2x and that's being raised to the fourth power. So I have a product this like two times x that's a product a product is anything being multiplied together um, and that's being raised to a power so that's where the name of the property comes from and it says to find the power of a product find the power of each factor and just to review a factor is or factors are two things or not two things but any combination of things being multiplied together so in this case the two is a factor and the x is a factor as well so that basically means that that four exponent is going to go to each of the two factors. So if there are more than two factors, it would go to every single different factor there were. So this becomes two to the fourth power times x to the fourth power. And this one can be helpful to see expanded as well. So two to the fourth is, or sorry, 2x to the fourth is 2x multiplied by itself four times. And then from there, multiplication has this property called the commutative property where it's saying that if a bunch of factors are being multiplied together, we can rearrange them if we want. So I could technically rearrange this with all the twos together and all of the x's together. So like two times two times two times two times x times x times x times x. So I have four twos together and I have four x's together. So that's where my two to the fourth and x to the fourth comes from. And then for the next property, the power of a quotient property says to find the power of a quotient, find the power of the numerator, and the power of the denominator and divide. So let's say I have two over x raised to the third power. So this property says that the power has to go to the numerator and the denominator. So this third power will get applied to both the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator becomes two to the third power and the denominator becomes x to the third power. And this one we can expand as well. 2 over x cubed, or 2 over x to the third power, is just 2 over x being multiplied by itself three times. So 2 times 
So you can see across the numerator, there's one, two, three twos, two to the third power. And then in the denominator, there's one, two, three x's, x to the third power. So for example, four, more of just using those properties that we just learned. So for 4a, we have 3y in parentheses squared. So inside the parentheses here, we have a product. We have two things being multiplied together. We have 3 times y. So that means that that 2, the exponent, is going to get applied to each factor inside the parentheses. So 3 is a factor, and y is a factor. The 2 will go to both. So altogether, it'll be 3 squared y squared. And then if you're starting to get comfortable with the properties, you can simplify this one step further just by actually multiplying out the 3 squared. So 3 squared means 3 times 3. So altogether, that would be 9y squared. And then for the next property, or sorry, for the next example, a over negative 10 to the third power. So now we have a quotient that's being raised to the third power. So that third power will go to both the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator becomes a to the third power and the denominator becomes negative 10 to the third power and the negative 10 needs to stay in parentheses. So if you end up taking off the parentheses and don't include it, that's just 10 being raised to the third power with the negative slapped in front of it. So you want to make sure that the negative stays in parentheses with the 10. And then for C, so 3d over 2 raised to the fourth power. So we have a couple of different properties that we have to use for this problem. The first one we can use is the quotient one we just learned where that 4 will go and get applied to the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator becomes 3d in parentheses to the 4th because it's all of that 3d that are being raised to the 4th power. And then over the denominator, which is 2 to the 4th power. And then we actually have to apply another property here with the 3d to the fourth power because we have that power of a product one where we have two things being multiplied in the parentheses being raised to an exponent. So the four will get applied to each factor in the parentheses. So in the numerator, it becomes three to the fourth power over, or sorry, three to the fourth power times d to the fourth power. And then in the denominator, 2 to the 4th power. And then the last thing that we can do if we want to simplify it a little bit further is just actually find out what 3 to the 4th power and 2 to the 4th power is. So 3 to the 4th power is 3, or sorry, 3 being multiplied by itself 4 times. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And altogether that's 81. And then d to the 4th over 2 to the 4th, so 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And that is 16. All together, 81d to the fourth over 16. And then the last two examples would be good to try on your own so you could pause it here and then play when you're ready. So for a, 10y cubed. So we have a product inside the parentheses being raised to the third power. So that third power will go to each factor. So becomes 10 to the third power times y to the third power. And then if we want to find what 10 to the third power is, we can. It's 10 times 10 times 10. So all together, that is 1,000. So 1,000 y to the third. And then for the next example, 4 over n raised to the fifth. So we have a quotient in the parentheses. So both the numerator and the denominator will get that fifth power. So the numerator becomes 4 to the fifth, and the denominator becomes n to the fifth. 
And if we want to multiply out 4 to the 5th, we can. It's 4 multiplied by itself 5 times. So altogether, that's 1,024 over n to the 5th power. And then for C, we have to use a couple of properties again. So first we can use that quotient property. Because we have a quotient inside the parentheses, we can apply that fifth power to the numerator and denominator. So the numerator becomes one to the fifth and the denominator becomes two K squared to the fifth. So we wanna make sure that that two K squared goes in parentheses because that whole thing is being raised to the fifth power. And then now in the numerator, this like one to the fifth power is one times one five times and one raised to any power is always gonna be one because one times itself stays the same. So one times one times one, as many times you need to multiply it will always be one. And then in the denominator, now I have a product that's being raised to a power. So we have to go ahead and apply that exponent to each factor inside the parentheses. So to the two and to the k squared. So in the denominator, it becomes two to the fifth power times k squared to the fifth power. And then now we're gonna have to apply one more property, one of the first ones we learned, because we have a power to a power. That k squared to the fifth power, that's a power to a power, so we would need to multiply those exponents to simplify it. So one over two to the fifth, we'll leave that alone for right now. And then this k squared raised to the fifth becomes k raised to the two times five. And two times five leaves us with 10, so altogether we have k to the 10th power. And then lastly, we can just multiply out the two to the fifth, so it's two times two times two times two times two, with, which leaves us with 32. So one over 32k to the 10th power.